Hi, my name's Tom, and today I'm going to talk to you about classes of neurons. Okay, so this is going to be a brief overview of three different classes of neurons. They are broadly uh, afferent neurons, efferent neurons, and interneurons. And uh, we're going to see them interacting in an example here within the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Okay, for the example, um, I'm going to be using uh, what we call a reflex arc. I'm going to be using a classic example where you have a pain receptor. Um, for example, you might put your hand on a stove and there's a very quick reflex to a muscle to pull your hand off that stove because it's hot and it's uh, damaging your skin. So uh, this is uh, this arrow is the direction of neuronal activity and we're going to follow it around uh, describing the different neurons that this uh, this signal is passing through at the various or at the respective points. Okay first of all at the sensory receptor the pain is picked up uh, by the peripheral process of the afferent neuron, the respective afferent neuron, there are many, um, and uh, this travels along, propagates along what is generally considered to be a single axon, um, although it is sort of, we divide it into two processes, the peripheral process which as you would expect is in the peripheral nervous system and the central process which leads from the peripheral nervous system into the central nervous system where it junctions with a interneuron which we'll get to in a moment um, an important um, I suppose an important part of well I mean first of all afferent neurons are a bit special because they have just this single axon uh, that they propagate the signal along um, and also they, they don't really have they don't usually have dendrites, some do, um, but usually they don't because usually the only signals, the only um, yeah, the only signals, the only information that they need to transmit are from sensory receptors, i.e. not from other neurons. Um, so that's an important part of our afferent neuron, or what an afferent neuron looks like. And also that its cell body is outside of um, the central nervous system. That's another important part. So once this signal reaches the central nervous system, it junctions, meaning that it it uh, there's a synapse. There's a uh, therefore there's a neurotransmitter of some type, and that. Uh, you know, so there's a chemical, there's a, uh, there's first an electrical signal which gets converted into the uh, chemical signal of a particular neurotransmitter, and that then affects the soma or dendrite, uh, and is transferred, transferred into a electrical signal uh, within an interneuron in this case, and so the interneuron um, uh, propagates that signal, and in this example, it's Junctioning again, and once more to get to the uh, efferent neuron. And the efferent neuron usually has its cell body within the central nervous system. Um, uh, I can think of one example: uh, the enteric neuron uh, nervous system, which is in the gastrointestinal uh, gastrointestinal tract. Um, uh, that's uh, although they have efferent neurons, their cell bodies are obviously in the peripheral, uh, you know, they're, they're outside of the central nervous system. Um, so that's one example, but f for the most part they are, their cell bodies is uh, within the central nervous system and their axon extends out to the, the peripheral nervous system to their effector. Um, sometimes they don't go straight to their effector though. In this case we're affecting a muscle but it could be affecting a gland, it could be affecting another neuron uh, or something else. 
Now, um, and as I've just noted here, most of their axon is per is uh, peripheral. Um, one uh, one thing that I find I sometimes get confused with, and I'm sure other people do as well, is afferent and efferent. Like it's it's quite similar. There's only one letter different. And the way I think about it, or the way I remember it, is by remembering that an afferent uh, afferent neuron is arriving at the CNS, and an efferent neuron is exiting from the CNS. So I just remember it with a arriving, e exiting, and that's just one way. You, you might have another way which is better for you, but um, if if you can't think of one, there's there's one to help you remember. Um, and I suppose just a, a little note, uh, which is sort of, well, it is noteworthy. Um, it's, you know, there's the interneurons account for 99% of total neurons. Um, for example, there are 200,000 interneurons for every one afferent neuron and 10 efferent neurons. So the ratio goes 1 to 10 to 200,000 and so <laughs> these guys are the clear winners and um, there are a lot of interneurons that do a lot of cool, uh, very very cool things. So um, the central nervous system is where the majority, um, huge majority of our total neurons are. Um, Okay, so this has been an example of a reflex arc where we've seen uh, a basic circuit um, where pain has affected the uh, you know contraction of a muscle, in this case a hand away from a stove or something like that. And the reason, uh, I suppose the definition of a reflex arc uh, type of um, uh, type of circuit is that we, although these interneurons are connected to interneurons in the brain, these ones here are in the spinal cord. Spinal cord, right? So the this signal that we've been that's been in our example never went into the brain it only stayed in the spinal cord and the peripheral nervous system and so that is sort of by definition what a reflex arc is and this is a, a fairly classic example used by a lot of textbooks and other things so yeah I hope this has been useful for you this has been part two classes of neurons <laughs>